the boundless expanses of space. Negative 272 degrees centigrade, utterly devoid of sound, motion, gravity, and atmosphere, yet inexplicably fully capable of sustaining unprotected mammalian life with no visible adverse effects. We were raised in space, where the wind does not exist, unless, of course, one happens to be in the throes of a dramatic internal monologue, but he was different. Cleo, you were the wind. And you blasted uninvited onto the scene with your thousand tons of finely polished overcompensation and, in one great gust, swept away all the themes that had previously been established. You big sexy jerk! All right, let's warm this girl up. Yeah, she sure is a big one. Koi peed on death, dude! Hoti kurta sayeste! Sir Makane, we're under attack by a single vessel. Well, just blow it out of the sky, unless for some reason it's both inordinately fast and well armored for its size. How did you know that, sir? Yes, I'm detecting a theme here. We have incoming. Then let's go to second base. Afion Taisu! Kai Amartiaisu! It's so phallic. Sir Makane, our asses are being pounded by this. <laughs> Stop talking. I think that's enough foreplay. I've been waiting for this. Okay, baby, time to show off your sexy dance moves. <laughs> All right. Isolate Isolate locations. Erecting armor penetration mode. <laughs> Notice the incredibly sexual undertones about the way this ship fights? I have no idea what you're talking about, Elmer. Now, let's break their hymen! You heard me. Now for the love of Freudian subtext! Can't believe we're getting fucked by a giant silver dildo! Literally! I must have been drunk when I accepted a command of a UN fleet! Heads are going to roll for this! That was... I need to change my panties. Agapate tooth egg truth umon! Hardly. What was that, Elmer? I said Bolero, not Dragon Force. Hey, it's not my fault if this G-tar deciphered the coordinates all wrong. Hey, don't blame me. Elmer's a horrible lay. But what does that have to do with it? I mean, I am not. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, like that was hardly satisfying. I, I thought we'd be able to top off our fuel it's tanks with their... fan service, you nerdy yeah, little doormat. Yeah, this is where the metaphor anyway. falls apart. Oh, come on. You're Giggity. Well, there's always that other useless ship. Well, Let's go. Know about it. And quit flirting, you two. If I wasn't a woman, I'd sure feel emasculated right now. Never mind that. I need to go to bed with that ship. Pardon me, sir? You heard me. See, Elmer, there's nothing sexual about this imagery. No, nothing at all. I assume you're the captain of that ship. That was so awesome. Such power, the way you made them your bitches. Are you currently seeing anyone? Your tactics, your strategy, your cartoonishly to have an upper body. There's so many things I want to do to you. Where do you sleep at night? What's your what? name? Are you? Uh-huh. Oh, how incredibly forward of me. I'm Michel Vauban. Gourmand. Dashing swashbuckler, 34C cop, resistance leader. Oh, pull the other one. It'd have got bells on. What? <laughs> do you seriously expect us to believe that? What do you think, Noli? <laughs> Girly man or chestless tomboy? <laughs> it could go either way. Kind of hard to tell in this no light. Way. Well, I can't see any five no o'clock shadow. All. I'd risk it. Where Barrett, you'd suck you the balls of a gonorrhea <laughs> infested lemur if they were covered in booze. <laughs> yeah. However, could they have Guilty seen through charged. your clever ruse, sir? Uh... You're all a bunch of. Douchebags. And you're the least convincing transvestite since Dame Edna. What? Dame Edna's a man? Fetty, have you always been such an enormous puff ever since you were a little boy? For as long as I can remember. And what about you, Ralph? Oh, Vetty, you should know better than anyone. There's nothing I enjoy more than the feel of a short, sharp... If I may interrupt Your Excellency's creepiness, we've received a report from Mackinay. Failed miserably, has he? Indeed, though in all fairness he was commanding UN forces. Oh, don't get me wrong, I've wanted an excuse to snub that little bastard and install my own puppet leader for his territory ever since we seized power. Why else do you think I maintain a division of useless nitwits on active rotation? Well, it's been a slice. Feel free to invite us back any time. You're stealing all our valuable possessions. Yeah, I was being facetious. I don't need an invitation. Wait. What, what if I offered you the opportunity to lead an army of ill-trained peasants in a poorly thought-out uprising against an incredibly powerful galactic empire? Well, first I'd laugh at your naivete, then I'd tell you to get stuffed. But the People's Army desperately needs competent leadership. You're really not making a case for yourself. Think of She's really bad at this. Interested. Tell me why we work for her again. I've been siphoning thing. money off Look, of families and investments for years. all this is just years. my memories. I shouldn't have to put up with this. Look, Michelle, I'm a pirate. 
There's only one thing that interests me. I could probably find you a talking parrot. Booty. Oh, well, all right then. Your place, my place, uh, against one of these inexplicably ornate pillars. What? No, like treasure and money. I don't want to have sex with you. Then just kill me now. Jeez, you're melodramatic. Fine, if it'll shut you up, I guess I'll place you inside my pants. So you mean you will do the nasty after all? What? No! Why does everyone keep thinking that? Well, you're giving off really mixed signals. Yeah, I get used to that. And that's how, despite being outnumbered, outgunned, and using C-grade troops, I was able to turn the battle in my favor and complete all the mission's primary objectives, while taking few casualties of my own and inflicting many upon the enemy. Yes, but without the capture of Michel Volbaud, it matters not. Kill him and purge the Machinay bloodline from the annals of history. Leave none alive who remember the name. But, but why? Well, either you're lying through your teeth and are nothing but a stuck-up toff who was too busy stuffing his face to properly command a battle, and as such should be executed for your gross incompetence. You know I'm hypoglycemic! Or you're telling the truth, in which case you're far too competent to be allowed to remain alive for fear you may one day become a threat to the regime. Well, touche, you brilliant bastard. Touche! Baronicide is my third favorite kind of political intrigue. Please use your indoor voice, Admiral. The first rule of maintaining a galactic empire is to never allow your allies to become too powerful. Isn't that right, Vetti? I love the way that twisted little mind of yours works, Ralph. I wish His Excellency would be more discreet. Ending the decrepit Pope Gorna! My, my, for the Pope himself to grace me with his presence. There must be truly urgent matters at hand. Nope. So, how would you like to marry my daughter? Frankly, I'd rather eat dirt. Oh, come on. She has a wonderful personality. I do hope your lies aren't so transparent during your long-winded sermons, Gorna. Fine. She's a bitch from hell, but it would certainly be politically favorable, wouldn't you agree? I thought your Black Cross religion worshipped that bitch. That's beside the point. Well, I'm so sorry, but you must excuse me, for I have official business to attend to. By which, of course, I mean having my 12-year-old Castrati perform unspeakable acts for my perverted amusement. You heard me. <coughs> Sir, I feel it necessary to point out that in all likeliness, these pirates are simply going to scrap our vessel for whatever money they can get, then leave us lying naked and unconscious in a ditch somewhere. <sighs> Your ship needs repairs, so we're taking it to New Orleans. You ever been? City of jazz, legalized prostitution, and racial equality? Prepare to be disappointed. You call this a renaissance theme? I know it looks more mid-industrial revolution, but just go with it. Fair is foul and foul is fair. fair. Hover through the filthy air. That's more like it. Betty! How utterly absurd this is. As if these tiresome prats need to put on a mask just to be pretentious. Well, what about you? By wearing a mask, doesn't that also make you implicitly complicit in this great charade? Oh, and this is just so women don't collapse in orgasmic convulsions at the merest glimpse of my beauty. I'm incredibly handsome, you know. Incidentally... You wouldn't happen to be the daughter of a powerful religious leader mingling incognito among the nobility in order to get an unbiased view of the world, would you? No. Why do you ask, anyway? Oh, no reason. Your Excellency, must you be so overtly homosexual? Oh, come now, Conrad. This is the Renaissance. Everyone who's anyone has a cute little castrati boy. And what about your obsession with Michel Volbaud? Is such a thing as multitasking? Yes, but the cross-star religion frowns on flamboyant homosexuality and pedophilia. Do they now? How deliciously ironic. But if you were to marry Pope Gorna's daughter, it would significantly increase your political and military power. Ah, the things we do for political gain. Or, alternatively, the daughters of notable religious figures. If you ask me, they're nothing but a bunch of cowards! Indoor voice, Admiral. <laughs> You're not opposed to me selling your ship for scrap, are you? First, I just want to get this straight. We're actually having a conversation while standing out on the outer hull of a spaceship with no protection whatsoever. Yeah, I don't pretend to understand how that works. I mean, forget how we're even alive with no air to breathe, but without said air, how can we even hear each other? And I'll take that as implicit consent. Pardon? Oh, nothing. So, why is the crest of the royal family engraved on your ship's bridge? Oh, so we are going to address that after all. Well, since you asked, in my veins flows the last of the royal bloodline, and one day I shall reclaim my birthright and become Fuhrer. That's a presumptuous thing to say. Have you got a death wish? That's a stupid question, Michelle. I say it because it's true. And from that day forward, all female aristocrats will be required to wear tiny miniskirts! Also, my name's Cleo. Cleo of the Wind. Yeah, get used to that, too.